Greetings, Warriors of the Ring. My name is Strider656, and I'm thrilled to welcome you back for yet another adventure through Middle Earth. In this series, I'll be playing random ladder matches on Discord and showing you War of the Ring games from my perspective by only viewing my cards and sharing with you my thoughts and in-game reactions while trying to keep the end result a mystery. The other player is aware that I'm making a video as I ask for permission both before and after playing. Hope that you enjoy this video and I encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Today's adventure features Complex Flips. Uh, Complex Flips started playing uh, War of the Ring in January of this year. Found the Discord through Ira Faye's videos. Uh, this was actually letter game number nine that we're playing right now. Uh, and War of the Ring in general, like the actual game. Uh, she was interested because she saw uh, Shut Up and Sit Down's review of the game. And uh, preferred pronoun is she, her. So I'll be referring to Complex Flips as she, her. All right. So we're going to jump into this game. It's been a while since I've, a, since I've done an adventure. I've been doing lots and lots of Fury of Dracula. Uh, also been doing a lot of tournament games. So it'll be interesting getting back into this format. Um, so anyway, if you can see in the chat here, uh, I do ask for video permission, which I got, and Complex Flips prefers free people. So I'm going to be playing Shadow today, so I'm very excited. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been Shadow, and Shadow is my stronger side now. Uh, let's see what I draw into, because I did not enter my password yet. All right, let's view password, view Shadow hand. All right, I drew into Corsairs of Umbar. And Candles of Corpses. Sauron is very happy right now. I'm very happy. These are great cards. The only bad thing about them is they're not playable. But these are cards I want to have. So I'm very excited. Uh, very excited to see this. Let's see how the rolls go. Uh, so I allocate no eyes. And I don't roll any. Uh, so now I'm thinking, alright. It's fine. Because my rolls have two monsters in them. And there's barely any Palantir, so this is pretty good. Um, so Saren's not feeling too bad. I just noticed the turn count looks bizarre. Uh, so I'll be fixing that uh, as we go. Let's see if I can just fix this right now. You're going to see the turn thing move. There it goes. It's moving. All right. There we go. I definitely thought I fixed it before the game started. I don't know when it glitched. Uh, I think it's when I entered my password, actually. All right. So I allocated no eyes. And complex flip flips rolled this. So what I'm looking at, I'm thinking, all right, well, at least it's not more movement. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, she starts by moving. I say safe. Very dangerous fellowship walk going on. Uh, I begin because I have courses of Umbar. I'm going to move these guys from Farharad uh, and just run them to Umbar. And do my t classic move down to Gorgorith. Fellowship moves again. It's safe. It moves them to Umbar. And I said to move these guys up because I could always threaten Gondor. Uh, plus people have made a lot of mention in my earlier videos of not doing this. Uh, so I think this is okay. Uh, Complex Swift draws a strategy card. Uh, and now I decide to bring Isengard to war. And now she's passing. Uh, so Saruman decides he'll make an entrance now. So he's comfortable in Orthanc. Passes again. I just move up. Passes again. I oh, know. It doesn't pass. Oh, thinks about it moving. And then thinks better of it. Passes. Uh, and I move into Minas Morgul. And up uh, to here. All right. And does a typical movement of the Edoras to Westumnet. And Carrick to Old Forest Road. I decide to, that this lone Isengard unit wants to walk into Moria. And these guys want to continue the do rush. We go into turn two. So far, nothing exciting to talk about. It's just a game. I draw into Grand and Olegai. I'm, I'm drawing really good cards. So very military heavy. Uh, I do have the Candle Corpses as well. Alicate Knight is a have to. Uh, Fellowship is okay. I roll one more eye. And I roll plenty of musters here. So I can definitely bring... Um, let's see what her, her roll is this. 
So I can definitely bring all everyone to war. I might, I might not want, I don't really care about the Witch King right now. So I'm just going to bring everyone to war so I can always do um, Attack Adult Amroth. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, she passes. I bring Sauron down. Passes again. I bring the Southrons and Easterlings down. There's a Fellowship Movement. Uh, safe. So the good thing about this is that now I threaten um, Day Without Dawn. I don't have it, but it, but I'm threatening it. So they're at war, and now that forces this to be used. Fellowship moves on four, and I finally hit. and get a zero reveal. And I say tough choice until I realize it's not really tough at all. You want to lose Gandalf, so might as well risk it. Worst case scenario, you don't draw Gandalf. Uh, but I draw the perfect tile. So Gandalf moves through Moria, and this is the classic, the classic Lord of the Rings way for Gandalf to die. Uh, so imagine a three is the Balrog. I'd say or not tough. So Gandalf is dead, and now Candle of Corpses comes out early, hoping for some good hits here. I get two. I wanted three, but you know you can't always get what you want. So to two corruption. A fellowship is flipped. I decide to um, move these guys onto the fellowship because they're already in position and then move these guys up. Um, and there's Emerald Delamroth. I didn't know she had that, but that's a great card to have. Um, my original plan, too, is also to use uh, the, the the Palantir to always go onto there. So let's see what happens here. So they go there. I move up the do line here and I just have to move, to move these guys out there's no reason to keep anyone in oh, I guess so I said there's no reason to leave anyone behind because no one's gonna sneak in here but I've done enough military stuff where it's it's okay to leave one behind plus I have Ola guy in hand so that's my thoughts all right here we go I draw into give it to us and half orcs and goblin men all these cards I'm drawing are great I have no complaints fellowship is okay uh, so I allocate and I roll three more and I'm like, oh man, it was such a good, it was such a good start. And now I'm kind of stalled here. I mean, I will get some, some attacks in, um, but I have to get, I have to find a way to get someone to war potentially. Um, and thankfully complex flips helps me up by rolling this. I say helps me out because I have four eyes in the pool and this shows movement. So not really lucky there. Uh, she starts by moving the fellowship. Uh, I miss my reroll. A miss. So those orcs are blind. Uh, so I decide to help them out. Nah, I guess not yet. I attacked Old Forest Road. Uh, no card. She says no card. Uh, and there are my sixes. Uh, I got two. And no hits back. So one orc moves down. What I could do is, I was thinking originally, I could always I could always attack Dale here. That would force the Witch King in, but I don't want the character to become a pain in the neck. Uh, so she separates Gimli. So Gimli's taking a walk to Rohan. I don't know what his motivation was. Maybe he got scared of these. Uh... Gimli got scared. That's, the, that's my idea. So he saw these orcs on him, saw them coming. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm done. Uh, I'm going to go here and find and find some uh, their mountains this way. So there's Gimli. I play Give It To Us. And Riders of Theoden is played. Now it kind of makes sense because you're not wasting an action to just to get them in Edoras and move, move. So it gets more efficient to get the um, companion out. And I decide to take Carrick over. Uh, because I don't want to deal with them. Uh, like I said, I'd, I'd rather not get the Witch King now than have to deal with an overpowered Carrick. And the Fellowship moves again. So I hit on fives here. I'm going to roll a lot of dice. I got two hits on the on the, on the the initial roll, one on the Hunt re-roll, and I draw an I. Perfect. Perfect for me. Uh, so th that's three Corruption. And I draw Legolas. And it looks like we forgot to move the... Um, the corruption up so the corruption should be at three right now 
we'll see if that impacts the game as we go. Like I said, this is a adventure game, so not too worried. Um, I use my final action to um, just do the regular um, voice here, just to get some more elites, just in case um, Gandalf comes in. All right, we go on to turn four. I draw into New Power is Rising and Nazgul Strike. Again, no crappy cards. This is a great, great game for me. All right. Let's see what happens. I allocate an eye. Fellowship is okay. I roll one more. Got a lot of musters. And there's your Will of the West. So Gandalf the White shows up. I'm waiting to hear it. Oh, well. I guess it's not working. Sometimes you can hear the audio of my game, but it's clearly not playing right now. All right. Uh, let's see what I decide to do. I attack Dale because I want to take care of the north. Uh, no card. I'm grateful for this. I could have played a great host here, but I don't want to waste that because that's a new power is rising. And I do get my hits. And so does Complex Flips. So there they go. And now the north is at war. Uh, G passes. I play new power is rising just to threaten Rohan. I'm not thinking of Rohan, by the way. Uh, I just want to scare. And plus, I looked at my force before doing this. I still have one elite left, so I could still play half orcs and goblin men and not be out of elites. So I did think of that. I'm going to get to the correct hand here. Uh, she passes again. I decide to bring in more Nazgul because uh, I want to play Nazgul Strike. I also would like to use... Um, I, I want to reposition the Nazgul around the map. She flips a fellowship, and now I decide to move. Um, I don't want to strike now because it's unlikely I'm going to hit. Maybe I should have stroke, struck. Uh, she was a fellowship, and I hit. And it's a one reveal. So it's still good. I mean, because I can still play Nazgul strike and remove the Nazgul anyway. Um, but that's good. So it's slowing down. Takes the corruption. Should be at four, not three. Um, and I move to East Rune, and I, I condense these armies here outside of Lorien. Uh, my intention is they're far from war, so I, I can get I can still get them under siege without worrying about mustering happening. And uh, she decides to put the the one regular from Iron Hills to Erebor, and this whole giant army into Helm's Deep. I decide to bring the Witch King in in Dale, and here we go, extra die. Turn five, I draw into Shelob's Lair and Denethor is Folly. Uh, Denethor is garbage, so that's that's going. Bye, Denethor. You're gone. I allocate an eye. I say okay. She calls her cards. Is Fellowship okay? Uh, I roll no more eyes, which is great. Um, but I'm not going to have many dice to roll here. She rolls lots of movement. She starts flipping the Fellowship. I'm going to start with Nazgul. Nope, of course there's a Vumbar. Uh, and I decided to bring all. And my thought here is I would rather not deal with Kyrdan's ships. She's already played um, Imrahel Dul Amroth. So what I'm thinking of doing is if I if I if these guys in Umbar uh, go here, then I could Nazgul strike to reposition my Nazgul leadership, uh, and then play um, Grand on Dul Amroth. That's my thoughts. We'll see what happens though. So all those Sethrons and Easterlings leave their barbecuing behind. Uh, and here we are. We're finally doing something. Gondor moves down. Fellowship moves. Uh, I I rolled two by accident. I got very excited. I was thinking of that I had a Nazgul leadership on there. And I just undo it. So we undo it. And she just laughs. That's so I got so excited. And now I play Nazgul Strike. And move them. Move the Witch King. And I kept my leadership. And I think that's okay. Uh, and now I roll for the hunt. Roll a four. That's a miss. We roll a five. This is a hit because um, we count the modifier currently, which is a plus one. And I draw the one reveal. So it's still the same kind of outcome. Just happened a little bit later. Now she gets to four corruption. Should be five. Um, she passes. I decide to play Grand. Uh, round one, I play uh, We Come to Kill. Get one hit on the combat roll, one on the re-roll. She gets three. I take my damage, but I forget to kill. 
So they came to kill, but they forgot to kill today. So that's on me. That's not her fault. Uh, did I draw a card? I don't think I even did a Witch King draw. Maybe I did. Maybe I just drew this. I don't remember. Um, I'll have to rewatch this afterwards. You can tell me. So I play a Stormcrow. I get two, three. Um, let's see. So that final hit here, uh, that's, well, who knows? We don't know how that we come to kill would have gone. But I can speculate that I probably took one less damage than I needed to. Um, so anyway, that battle's done because of Great Host. And I'm at three. Uh, she passes. Uh, now I decide it's time to take a stroll through the countryside of Gondor. Um, so here we go. I leave one behind because I don't want to deal with any shenanigans. And my second action is I just move these guys to East Rune. Uh, she passes again, and now I attack Pilar Gear. There's no card. I get my hit, and she gets too many. I rolled too many dice, but I, the six is current is there. Now I'm at four, and their 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 mission is over. I mean, I could keep going towards Minas Tirith, but I think that's ridiculous to even think of. And she musters a guy in the way and lost her neck, and a guy in Minas Tirith. I attack Loria now because I just want to get the elves under siege. At this point. Uh, she was a fellowship. And. Oh. She doesn't, She shouldn't have moved him. She flipped him. So we're good. And now I put Wooden Realm under siege. And. She was a fellowship now. And. I am. I miss. So she's one away from Mordor. Uh, I contemplated here thinking I, I could play, I could add a troop, but there's no reason. So I'll just move armies around. And I move these guys out here. I don't want to risk a military victory because if I leave this empty, they could always just go out, go out, go out, go out if I roll all eyes. And I have no um, I have no rings in the pool. So they, the mortar wants to join the party now. All right. Here we go. Turn seven. Turn six. I draw into fighting Urukai, and on and they went. And I roll. I forget to allocate eyes. Now the rule for this is you allocate the leftmost, because that's the first one that you would roll. Um, and in combat, you take from the right. So that character I changed to an eye. And there we go. That's correct. And she rolls three movement, uh, three characters, a palantir, and a hybrid. She starts with playing Faramir's Rangers. Not happy to see that. So now we're getting a more buff Gondor. Gets one hit. Um, but I'm going to go on with my plan of just going for um, these two and these these ones. I move Nazgul onto the Fellowship and just re put my leadership all around. So it's kind of even here. Even here. And I, I just forget what I'm doing. Um, so I say, oh, you okay, or I'm okay. Anyway, she puts, uh, uses a character to put the Smeagol tile in the pool. I use half orcs and goblin men. And, um, here we go. We're, we are doing Lorien in a second with the fighting Urukai with the past. So she passes, and now the Urukai are fighting in Lorien. Um, I have no cards to play, but I want to keep my characters visible um, so that she doesn't know if I have um, cruel as what cruel, cruel weather. Uh, so no card. I'm hoping I get get lucky. Uh, I got one hit on the combat roll, and I get three on the re-roll. What a crazy roll! So I feel bad for these elves. They're just sitting in Lorien. They're like, oh, we should do okay. We have a pretty strong force. And right away, that's four hits. And three back. So, I mean, they all hit. But it's brutal. It's brutal for the elves. Um, turn two, I just get my six normally. No card is played, and she gets one hit back. So, fighting Yurikai does its job. She passes. Um, I decide not to move the Witch King, because I can't cycle cards anyway. So, the Witch King is just hanging in Lorien. Uh, probably just, you know, enjoying the, the now the now shadow settlement. 
Uh, no card is played. I yeah, she plays no card. I'm hoping that I can get some more luck with sixes again. Uh, so I only got one on the first combat, and she gets one back. Um, I decide to press. I'm gonna take my damage there. Uh, I got one, and I reroll another one. Very very lucky. So I'm feeling very fortunate right now. Uh, she gets two sixes back, but you know, too little, too late with that. Um, but it does make the combat for Erebor potentially harder when because that's where I'm going to go next for my last two. Uh, she decides to recruit uh, Elite in Minas Tirith. I decide to uh, put Erebor under siege. She moves out of Minas Tirith. So I'm thinking I could just move these guys up here uh, to, to take Minas Tirith. But the danger is I don't want to leave Dol Amroth open to recapture. Um, so I just move my guys here. And my second action is to move these guys over. Um, just to protect Umbar also to retake here if I need. Um, so she moves the Fellowship. Um, I miss. But I very risky uh, because... Cruel weather could have been a thing. So I put Shelob in the pool. And I draw, and then we go into the next one. I draw in a Day Without Dawn and Dreadful Spells. Um, I'm happy to see that. Uh, and I put the pool together. Um, I do make a mistake here. I want to point it out. And um, so I'm going to show you the hunt pool. And so I want to be totally transparent here. So when I'm putting the, the tiles back in the pool... Uh, I let the negative one out. Okay. We'll see how that impacts the game, and we'll see the resolution that happens, because something does happen later on. All right. Uh, so I allocate um, one eye, rolled no more. She gets a lot of movement. Uh, and I start by drawing the two R. Takes a random. It's Pippin. That's a reveal. Um, so it moves up to five. Uh, I decide to move my troops onto Erebor, and I decide to just bring these guys down. Um, because even if they try retaking Lawrence and take them a while here to get there, um, and that way I can go for Edoras for a point, just in case this group here decides to retake and pull our gear. That's my thoughts. Uh, so the fellowship is flipped. I decide to move my leadership where they belong. Uh, so I move the Nazgul out of um, Pilar gear onto Erebor. Like so. And I have it like here. That way I can play Dreadful Spells with one of these to start. Uh, she attacks Pilar gear here. I'm not going to use any cards. There's nothing that will help me. I do no card. Plays Guards of the Citadel. Interesting to see. Uh, her charge does nothing. Her combat roll gets one. I get uh, one back. And I decide to stay. She plays uh, advantageous position, means I hit on sixes, um, gets two, and I get one. I would have gotten two, but advantageous position prevented that first hit from hitting. So nice job there. And that's enough. So I'm, I'm backing away. Uh, I decide to move into Zagiliath to thread Minas Tirith. Now I also know that Guards of the Citadel is off the table. Uh, so she recruits a regular or elite in Minas Tirith. I play Dreadful Spells, attack Erebor. Um, look at that fine roll. So for Nazgul, we're just dancing in circles. And one hit. It's probably the Witch King. Witch King's probably mad again, thinking of that past game. Um, so get one hit. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I put a tile in the pool, a three. Passes again. I decide to draw a strategy card so I can play something. Passes again. I decide to attack Erebor. I'm going to play uh, the Onslaught card. Uh, so my initial roll is nothing. I get one as a reroll. And she gets one back. Uh, so I look at my hand here. I think, all right, um, I'm going to Onslaught three because I still have more um, in the in the, in the the battle. So I do Onslaught three. I don't normally do this. Uh, and I get two. Very lucky, very happy about that. And I decide to press and draw to see if I can take them out. I draw into King's Reveal, which I'm going to play immediately. She has no card. So I take two out because no one needs to be alive up here. I just have to survive with one unit. 
Um, and uh, that does work because my first two rolls are hits. And she rolls way too many back, but it's okay. Because uh, that's two and one in a re-roll. That's two. Um, so I'm at nine. And she moves the fellowship and gets she lobs layered. And I roll a four. And there goes Strider. Uh, and I attack Minas Tirith just to threaten it for next turn. And we go to turn eight. Turn eight, I draw into Morgul Wound and Threats and Promises. I allocate an eye. Uh, she's Fellowship okay. Uh, I add no more. And she rolls lots of movement, but also two Wills of the West. So she's moving the Fellowship. Uh, I draw one. Great progress here. Just so, so she can win if she moves uh, three more times without getting revealed. <clears throat> um, I decided to put um, day, play Day Without Dawn because I don't want this uh, Will of the West to, to hinder me. So there it goes. Fellowship move. This is this is the most important movement in the game here. She needs to not be revealed uh, to have a chance of winning. And she draws an eye. So that stops her. Uh, and she takes Boromir. And we're down to just a regular Hobbit. <clears throat> Now, she has a few actions left. Um, so I'm threatening to go this way like I'm going to Minas Tirith, but I'm really going to Edoras. Uh, so I move one group there, uh, and I forgot the other group. Uh, and the second group, I just move them here to be protected because there's no way they can take over, um, or, or she can take over the let these two to end the game. Um, so she decides to um, take Minas Tirith back, it looks like. And I move into Edoras for my 10th point. I say GG. Um, she attacks me as Tirith. I say okay. Plays confusion on me. I roll no ones. I get one hit. And she gets one hit back. So I take one and she presses. And I go out into as Gilead. And um, she says now GG. But then I realize there's a chance there's an, there's an achievement to get. And I always ask for permission, but if you can get 13 victory points in a shadow, by the end of the game, that's a victory. That's not a victory point. That's a, um, an achievement. I'd love to get that. So I want to try it. Um, so I ask if it's okay. I say, is it okay if I'd like to try for it? So go ahead and try. I, say, I thank her for it. I'm very grateful. Um, so I attack Pilar gear. No card. I get my hit. That's one. Uh, and now I'm going to attack. I, I look at my dice. Um, so I need one, two, three, four. To make it here. So I can go one, two, but I can't really double up. I realize that in a minute. Um, and I attack forwards from Orthanc because I want the bigger army. She does have scouts. Interesting she didn't play it earlier. I just got to the red arrow. Um, I attack Helm's Deep. And now I go for the, I go for the 13. Let's see if it happens. I have to get um, seven sixes. War fives here. Uh, so my first round, I play Devilry of Orthanc. She plays Horn Dark. Um, and I get uh, one hit. And she gets uh, two. So not looking good so far for my, my my hopes. I have to get I have to get a lot of sixes. And my rerolls are going to dwindle each time. She plays Axe and Bow. I get uh, one. And she gets two so I press again it's getting more unlikely here and I have to get five sixes I get one uh, and once she gets more than one hit I know it's over so I say stop GG uh, that's the game with complex flips I want to thank complex flips for letting me even play it out um, I think I say thanks for letting me try I needed a few more dice this is no problem I say I really liked your play to retake Pelar gear I said, you think you were, I think you were unlucky and more you had a real shot. Uh, that's why I went Day Without Dawn. I want to get to the resolution, though, because this is where I looked at the hunt pool. Um, and I looked at the hunt used. And I still saw the negative one in there. Um, so I'm just going to skip to the point in the chat where we realize it. So I ask here in the chat, um, when did you play the blue negative one? I see it's in use. She says, fairly early. Um, and I feel awful. I said, I don't think I made it into the pool at all. Um, so she says she's fine with it, but I want her to draw. So I, what I do is I put the negative one on the tie on the pool and the eye back in because I want to see what would happen. 
um, because it was the reveals that killed her, right? So if she was able to draw any non-reveals going up, then I think that I would keep letting her draw to see if she could possibly win. But she redrew an eye. So that's how we resolve this. Let me know your thoughts on how we resolved it, if you agree with me. Again, I wasn't trying to be sneaky or a jerk. Obviously, in the replay, I can see a lot of things quicker. Let me show you the statistics on this one. It didn't feel fair. And um, let's look at the stats. It wasn't. I was plus five on sixes. I was minus four on eyes. This is, this is a shadow player's dream come true. So Saren's dancing for joy somewhere after this one. Um, again, so thank you all for watching. I want to thank Complex Flips uh, just for playing the game with me, being a great sport. Uh, welcome to the community. Um, and I want to encourage all of you, if you haven't if you haven't talked to me on Discord, please feel free to send me a message. Maybe we can play a game. You can be featured in Adventure as well. Um, so thank you all. My next video will be on Saturday. Um not Sunday, and I'll post that in the community thing. I'm going to do a live play of my Fury of Dracula tournament. Uh, please check it out. Um, I'd love to see some more comments. And that's it. Uh, thank you all so much. See you in the next one. Bye now.